I, I did do the timeout for one second and it's like not letting him talk still. Jen Serene, welcome. This game is absolutely amazing. I do really enjoy it. Plus with all the mods, it just looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I don't know either, Chaos. Maybe we, maybe we, we need to, to temporarily uh, take your sword away. <laughs> Until you get back into the swing of Twitch things. I wonder if it's like misclicking on mobile, if it's like freaking just like fat fingered, right? The ISS Einstein has discovered a previously unknown strategic resource in Gorham C. 2A to volatile moats. These pre-natural particles contain a tremendous amount of energy, which could be exploited in an energy production as fuel or even as explosives. Um, non such. I did try timing you out again for one second. I'm hoping that fixed it, but the spirits have granted us new uh, if not, please let me know. Additional in engineering research. Uh, let's get the coil guns. Nope, didn't fix it. I don't know why it's not letting me untime out. I feel so bad that I don't know how to do this. And Jen, sir, I'm gonna butcher this name. Jen Senere, thank you for the follow. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's why I wanna figure it out right now, non such being. I did time out, Greg, for one second. It did not fix it. He's still unable to chat. He's not banned. I already did the unbanned. Hmm. I wonder if Chaos needs to do it. Wait, wait, they have an untime out command? Hold on. Hold on. They have an untime out command. When did they do that? It says the user you are trying to untime out doesn't exist. I have no idea. Oh, you had to reload the page. He's back. He's back. He's back. Welcome back, Nonsense Bing. So sorry about that, buddy. I'm glad we at least figured out what to do in that situation for the future. Because um, I really, I really do apologize. And yeah, that is... Uh, yeah, unfortunate, but you know it wasn't personal or anything. Uh, they definitely do not like me. We'll have to deal with them as we can go. The structures on Jernost 8 are not as old as we first believed. It seems to be a playground or amusement park of some sort. Science officer Vlada Ulnanova notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from, and that, to the builder alien eyes, this might have been a cutting-edge sensor array or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless to our humans, it looks mostly like a place where you would take your young and let them amuse themselves. On the bright side, the one nice thing about all that was, uh, yeah, bring my stream to a, to a crawl so we can figure out how to get you back in chat and on such being. Happy to do it for you, buddy, and I appreciate you being here. So, you know, let's look at the positives that came out of, uh, out of the mishap, right? Yeah, it happens. It happens, Chaos. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. The next time, just time out doobies, so then we won't stop stream. He'll just come back later. I don't know where doobies is here. I think he's in a meeting. Um, oh, now I'm making myself laugh too much. Let's get Pop Ghost Feed. I have not been paying attention to this campaign, like, at all right now. Um, we need to quickly start getting some more mining stations going. We have a science ship doing nothing over here. And I would like to find out what's out here um, in the galaxy. I have alloys to colonize a new planet. This is a 23 Gaia world, which is absolutely insane. Let's make it new Caprica uh, generator. Or we'll just name it energy. Because we have so many generator districts there, right? Dude, not such being. You're, you're a freaking champ, man. I really appreciate being cool with it. 
We did learn a new command. The untime out is interesting. I didn't know it was a command. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. But then again, that's my mod's job to know that System shit, right? That's, that's why I, I give mods out. No, I'm kidding. I don't pay mods, so it's not a real job. Um, oh man, let's do the research project, the anomaly, and then we'll come up here and survey the system. The fleet's coming out right now as well. Let's do this, get that up to 10. Uh, and we'll reinforce them in a moment, a little, little bit. Some mods are paid, right? Um, so I know um, Co Carnage, right? I believe has actual paid mods. He has a whole team that's paid that does um, uh, his artwork, custom notifications, custom alerts, uh, everything for every game, right? Is custom. Um, then he also has, I think it's once a month, it might be twice a month, um, where all complete. bits go towards the mod team, right? So, like, every donation and every bit and everything like that that gets donated during those streams is what already his mods are getting paid, like, on top of that as bonuses, right? Um, other than that, though, I, I don't know because I feel like a lot of streamers haven't talked about that. Um... It wouldn't surprise me that there certainly is is paid mods. Um, but I, I have no idea. If I could ever get to the point where I was making, fleet you know, that, that solid Twitch money that I would love to uh, make someday, I would absolutely pay mods. I think it's important to. I would love to get to the level like Co-Carnage for that at some point. But that's a, a long distance, long term plan, right? Um, not this early on, Jen. Uh, we're going to be more about claiming a certain territory of our own. We'll still be defensive, um, but I can't just take them on from the get go. Uh, early game right now, you only start with a fleet of like 157 power where your first space station is already over 700 power. Uh, so we'll need to have at least the full fleet of Corvettes before we even start going after them, which will cost us over 2,000 alloys, so it'll take a little bit. During its survey of Zerk B1, the ISS Cortez discovered several exotic gases previously unknown to us. These gases have a variety of different uses, particularly in the operation of advanced energy-based weaponry and force fields. Some of the gases can also be used as starship fuel or even as recreational drugs. Dude, terribly unproductive. I've been super productive in everything but stream. Right? Like my new freaking layout and is uh is fantastic. And I'm hoping the audio level has super is super noticeable and that you guys uh uh have I appreciate it, right? Padinsky's saying it sounds better, so I believe him. Ooh, a continental world. That's a good find. How is this fight going? You guys should be, like, kicking this fight ass. It all has energy emitters. And Dark Scythe, thank you for the follow. You should just have the lips, Stark. Just zoom in all the way on the lips for Pog, right? Definitely an improvement. That is what I like to hear. A worthwhile investment, long-term investment. Complete. Plus, the green screen's fixed. Little remains of the strange alien modifications that our missing sublight probe had been subjected to, but we did manage to collect some valuable engineering data from the wreckage. Its memory bank was also salvaged, and from it we've extracted survey data of the entire Raman system. Excellent. Anomaly found. We kicked that fleet's ass. Um... I can't even select the, the fleet right now. M-type stars are among the most common in the universe, and they are often referred to as red dwarf stars. Their low luminosity means that they are difficult to observe with the naked eye from afar, but up close it is an amazing sight. Although they live for an extremely long time, they emit almost no UV light, resulting in unfavorable conditions for life to exist. Incredible, 100 days is perfect. Why can't I select my fleet? There we go. Please return home. And yeah. Keep going that way. Uh, leadership experience gains are great. 
you guys have any questions about Solaris or anything at all, like you want me to slow down and explain, I'd be more than happy to. Found. Um, just let me know. I know some of the stuff I am certainly speeding through. Uh, yeah, you're getting your butt kicked by the war in heaven. War in heaven can certainly be challenged, challenging, especially uh, especially depending on what empires decide to team up with them, right? The, the best defense versus War in Heaven is have a federation that you can be friendly with before it starts. Um, a good way to know if there's going to be a War in Heaven is to check and see if you get like the the uh, fanatical spiritualist uh, fallen empire and then try to have an alloy at that point. Um, you could do your best. I think War in Heaven. Let me, let me think I'm going to phrase this. You could do your best to try to find a pulsar to bait fleets into um to just go fully for shield damage and hold damage uh because pulsars remove all your shields and ai empires especially fallen empires are not going to retrofit their ships at all and so you'll have that's the like only area you're really going to have an advantage in um corvette spamming against fallen empires is never uh, a super smart idea. The war in heaven is triggered when two fallen empires become awakened empires, um, and then they will have what is called the war in heaven. From there, they will start to subjugate uh, empires. You can willingly join up with them uh, in hopes that your fallen empire is going to win, or you can stay out of their uh, faction and join up with the rest of the galaxy who don't, don't want to be a part of the fallen empires and stuff. Um, how much does Stellaris cost? Stellaris is currently on sale, I think, for $9 uh, on Steam or Humble Bundle. Typically, it costs, I think, $20. Um, and then expansions range from $5 to, like, $20, I believe. Uh, it is a Stellaris and Paradox game. Or it is a Paradox game. It's called Stellaris. Uh, so it's like CK2, uh, Hearts of Iron 4, EU4, where there's a lot of expansions. Um do please do please throw if you're buying from humble please use my link uh get a little kickback on it and it's freaking great and stuff um coolest drop and coolest thing that happened to me in blight uh we'll get back to that in one second let me finish the war in heaven stuff um with the war in heaven you the, all the empires will fight it out and uh yeah it can be it can be galaxy changing game ending uh, it typically ends when you either snuff out the original Fallen Empires uh, or they take over the other one. And then you get to go from there right now. I think you are my humble bundy buddy. We're humble buddies. I don't have a humble monthly, but if we're humble buddies, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I don't I set it up only a few months ago. Um because Podinsky was like, yo, you really should set this up. Oh, do you really? Dude, that's awesome. And I have not like checked that at all. I get the emails actually constantly um, about I need to set up my banking <laughs> for uh, for Humble Bundle so it can pay me out. All right, Blight League, Blight League, Blight League. So my coolest drop was the chest that I made myself uh, from the drop that had plus one specters. Um, and I can check on that, Greggy, tonight. Um, yeah, I got plus one Spectre chest, and it was uh, it was decent. It wasn't that great though. So, starting from the top in reverse order, though, right? So the the one on the top on the the mod list needs to be at the bottom, and then like the next one will be the one above it, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's it's disappointing that that's how it works out. Um, and if it's easier, I can go edit the pay spin so it's like clear to see that. But now that the mod launcher loads from the bottom to the top, I'll have to just like remember that. Uh, Humble Bundle is a website that uh, allows people to easily partner up with them to sell games in bundles or for discounts, as well as giving uh, uh, Humble Partners a kickback as well. Uh, for game sales and just an additional way to make some income especially for me but they're a great platform typically you get steam keys uh which i love they do the humble monthly where you get like three or four games sometimes like seven or eight games for like 12 dollars a month they typically have a couple triple a games along with some indie games in it um 
they have bundles where they work with charities as well so you can give like all the profits uh, or the proceeds for buying a game to a charity uh, which i really like as uh, on top of it right um there is an end game yes the end game is lots of events they're called crisis and there's four of them i believe right now um and you get one crisis per game uh these crisis are massive very difficult to deal with and all have unique mechanics um the win conditions for the game are to control 40 percent of the galaxy and habitable planets by yourself 60 percent of the galaxy and habitable planets in a federation or destroy all other empires um it's not a lot of stellaris is not about winning though in my opinion it's about the stories that your empire tell as they grow and expand and meet other empires in the galaxy uh it's a it's a role-playing game uh for me at least uh, i have one i have the achievements for it but i typically only play uh vanilla stellaris and go for achievements when new expansions come out so <laughs> you squeeze three at the moment then yeah the mummified remains of a single individual belonging to a previously unknown mammalian species have been found drifting in high orbit over Zerk 3. The being is dressed in what appears to be a flight suit completed with a helmet, and may be a fighter pilot that ejected in some ancient battle, only to be forgotten and left behind. Our study of the corpse has provided some interesting data. A tragic fate. But yeah, the best bet you're going to have fighting a, uh, a war in heaven is to, to get a, a, uh, a pulsar bashing it up uh build defensive platforms with only armor and then like exploit the ai to jumping into it if you can um because war in heaven is going to take a toll unless you like just concede and give up to whoever's trying to conquer you can't get achievements to work with the new launcher if you have any mods uh i might disable them there might be a way to enable them though but i haven't played non-modded since the new launcher so i have no idea what could be the cause of that the new launcher though is just like it's not great i really dislike how that you're loading mods now and everything alien writing someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing onto the surface of ceridon 2a the massive script covers a large portion of the moon's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary fascinating um i do need more ships but i also think i need another construction ship out But then again, I really just don't have the influence to do that. Um, I need to build a starbase there, though. I want this Bitreous system so I can get the continental planet. Where's our colony ship? Okay, so our colony ship is going to our Gaia world. The rifts of Yagrilia 5 are indeed writing. According to the survey team, it states the first 196 digits of pi as expressed in base 14. Prominent sociologists are now speculating furiously as why the authors believed anyone capable of reading this message would need this information. Peculiar. And through their hard work and expertise, scientist Ven Ventian has developed new skills. Meticulous. Uh, meticulous is great. Gives additional anomaly discovery chance, which is fantastic. We are going to invest into a new alloy foundry here. Followers of the Ancient One. What is going on over here? I wish I could see into this system. I don't know what this event is. But it looks like one of their planets has been occupied by the followers of the Ancient One. And that sounds very ominous. And very cool. I do want this gateway very badly as well. Uh, so they have found an immortal mega... Mega, oh my god, I can't pronounce anything. Uh, Megaopolis. It seems it's on a relic Situation world. Log updated. And it says, this is just a single city on this planet, but it covers all surface, even lakes and oceans. It is extremely well preserved from corrosion and destructions for the place that was abandoned long time ago. Hmm. Might be able to take that from them. Man, they have so much more territory than us so far. Like, holy crap. All right, have I missed anything else in chat? There was a lot of chat going on there, which I love. I just hope I didn't miss anything. And yeah, I'll take a look at the Humble Bundle stuff. I need to like get it hooked up into my bank account and all that fun jazz. 
The ISS Einstein has detected one of our missing sublight probes in the VIF system. We should begin recovery efforts as soon as possible. Situation uh, log updated. Okay, let's have you start with the sublight probe. See if anything bad's gonna happen like that. System survey complete. Uh, research. Yes, that's what it System looks like. System survey complete. Actually, now it looks like no one has invaded it. It looked like there was some sort of event um, where maybe rebels had popped up and were trying to take control of a planet and they've been suppressed probably through military. Um, I don't have vision into this planet. I can see this 14 population though. Uh, and for a non-capital planet, that is quite a bit of population early on. Their capital has 47 population. Are they an advanced empire? Oh, they're an advanced empire is why. So they got two extra planets to start with. They're going to be a challenge for sure. This Bitria system, though, is going to be really good to hold on to. Uh, armor nullification 25% and ship hull points minus 25%. We can go like full shields. We'll have to go some armor still, but like full shields on our defenses there. And that'll make it more sturdy and they'll be able to uh, pop through stuff. Those numbers are very high early on. Um, we are at 27 population on our current planet and they're at 47 and it's only been nine years so they clearly started probably at 35 i would want to say um pops on this planet and then these two planets started at probably five and they are considered one of the advanced uh starts right because they still have 14 there um so they're getting more tech bonuses more territory bonuses more income bonuses uh everything early on Later in the game, those numbers will be low, yes. But, like, we're literally nine years into a 400-year campaign. 400-year-plus, because I, Endgame Crisis doesn't start until 200 years into it, and that can last for we centuries. Are our faith to a new world. So we're finally getting our second planet out right now. Plus, uh, another way to know that they are, they are an advanced start is we have been using all our influence. Everyone's influence gains at, uh, early on are the same, right? So to have more territory just means they started with more territory and they're gonna be getting modifiers to help that as well. Science officer Venshian reports that Eurogolia 6 has covered pole to pole in a web-like network of electric impulses. These networks respond to external stimulus. The ISS Earhart experimented with sending a low voltage pulse onto the surface, resulting in a wave of illumination that rippled through the network like a circuit board. Even more re remarkable, the webs rearranged themselves. The secondary pulse revealed the filaments had organized into a new pattern centered around where the previous pulse had contacted the surface of Eurgalia 6. Vincian concluded that the discovery has confirmed his long-held theory that life can exist almost purely as electrical impulses, independent of cellular or viral structure. Right. Um, so it's not you can do multiplayer with other players. And yes, then there is PVP. Uh, I'm currently just in a single player world. So every empire is generated by the AI. Uh, multiplayer is a whole lot of fun. Um, and it becomes much more of a real time strategy game when doing multiplayer. Um, we've when I've set up multiplayer games in the past, because I don't do them that often, simply just because like kind of hard to plan them around like my life on the weekends um having to make sure i get all my chores done and stuff like that and stuff around the house but when we have been able to do it we leave it on complete. two times speed these screens that pause like right here um do not pause in multiplayer and so there if you have an understanding of the game um it really becomes like an rts because you're clicking through screens quickly to see what your rewards are getting you're trying to claim systems and the only time we pause is for when the mid game crisis spawns and the end game crisis spawns. Um, so like it's a constant uh, rush of, of trying to min and max as best you can while while like not making mistakes, you know. We've recovered the sublight probe in the VIF system. The sensor telemetry it has collected over the years has provided us with a complete survey of all planetary bodies within the system. Excellent. 
Science ship needs to go survey some more. I'm very curious as to what this is, but it's not super important until we find out what might be out here. Uh, we'll have you come up this way and see if there's something that way. Um, I'm going to have you do a research project there and survey there because that is that's just a blue star. Um, these guys still have open borders to us. For as much as they dislike us, they're not being that aggressive. <clears throat> so we'll have to see how that plays out. You found another 5 BGN, so now you have 20 BGN, and the magnet volume costs 22 BGN. You need to find 20 BGN, or 2 BGN ASAP. Uh, I'm assuming that's your currency because I'm an ignorant American mm -hmm. and not sure what that means Bluetooth uh, Check between the couch cushions Bulgarian Levs, okay, see I would never have guessed that in a million years A Lev what a great currency name Ten lev equals seven dollars. Now, if we get if we start going to fifteen lev, what does that equal? Found. It's gonna be like ten dollars, ten fifty maybe. Uh, One hundred fifty days is fine for an anomaly. Radio trophic world at thirteen, thirteen sixteen, thirteen primordial fifteen arctic. Um, there's probably a planet here or here or here. Then we should have more habitable worlds, I think. This continental is nice, man. It's really got like no negatives other than the 10% habitability, which we can offset. Complete. 10 levels, 570. Okay. Special project complete. An F-type star, or more widely known as a white dwarf star, are fairly large, emit a significant amount of UV radiation, and have wide habitable zones, which have a good chance of supporting life. Interesting. Like that as well. The U.S. currency was in the shitter. It was more or less one to one. Really? Maybe, maybe after the stock market crash. I have no idea. I don't know like anything about money or or markets of that nature and the fluctuating fluctuation of market worth or money worth, spending power. Right. Two thousand seven. Okay. Well, two thousand seven. Uh, I. So yeah, this is probably why I don't know. Two thousand seven. I was in a uh, a lockdown behavioral correctional facility with therapy in bumfuck nowhere in Utah and had no news and had no idea what was going on in the world and was freaking just like trapped away. So yeah, that would make sense why I have no idea what happened. Further study shows that the device close to the surface of Blondie is some sort of entirely automated ancient research station. By all accounts, the device should not have been able to remain secure, but an advanced design has protected it from the harsh environment. The satellite, however, is responding to the ISS Einstein's hails, returning information on the dangerous environment of the star, and obeying simple orders given to it, including orders to change its location. Two proposals have been made. We could keep the station where it is now and use the unique location to our advantage, or we could obtain or we could order the station to travel to a higher orbit so we could safely study the satellite's composition. Either choice would provide information possibly hundreds of years beyond what we could currently know, but only one can be made. How should we proceed? Uh, okay, so we get physics or engineering research from the star. Um, oh, that's a tough call, but I think the engineering research is going to be more beneficial to us if we take the system. So we're going to bring it up. Let's see, see what the thing is made of. Oh, we do have enough influence for another system. Um, this is 487. I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to reinforce the fleet. We're going to use all our alloys to try to be able to claim the system. Project complete. This blue star is relatively rare. And while the star is very bright, it pales in comparison to the A type star. Oh gosh, we're gonna have to give this territory up. There's, there's nothing else I can do. The, the best I'm going to be able to do is start bashing this system and use it as a defensive uh spot right that reduced hole points and the armor nullification is going to be our best friend when these guys get hostile 
That means this gateway is there as early on. No one will be able to access it, it for a while, heretics. though. And we even found a new enemy here. Uh, oh, it's mining drones. Okay. We've encountered some form of alien vessel in the Efrov system. We have flagged them as Lota aliens. All right, so our science ship can get the hell out of there. Let's queue up um, a few more systems to survey and research. System survey complete. A new faction has recently been gaining traction in the internal political landscape of the Colonial. Led by scientist Great Podinsky, they call themselves the Church of Divine Guidance. Their numbers, members support spiritualist and conservative values. And then there's a new faction that's recently been gaining traction in the internal political landscape of the Colonial, led by President, President Laura Roslin. They call themselves the Crimson Warrior Lodge. Uh, let's take the data bank uplinks for now, right? You run a the Church of Divine Guidance. Um, you would like you would like life to be organic. No robotic workers, which is fine. We're not doing any robotic workers. Pious pol polity, having spiritualistic values uh, being reflected in our empire's governing ethics, will please the church. And homogeneity. Homogeneity. I cannot talk. <laughs> Pious minds think alike, and having at least 25% of your population be some form of spiritualist will please the church. The robots are already forbidden. These guys are not super happy with us, by the way. They want us to conquest, conquer people. They want us to rival someone, and they want us to declare ourselves the overlord of one or more foreign powers. We're not going to rival these guys unless they rival us back. Just don't need that additional pressure early on. So, okay, this becomes a bastion. You become a trade hub. Trade hub is going to be really nice here. Um, I don't know where a shipyard goes. Science officer Vlada Olnova has found a number of decrepit solar collectors built by an unknown alien race. Even in their bad shape, they still continue to collect solar energy with greater efficiency than we have ever managed ourselves. Uh, where is this located? So that's way out there. Ooh, we can gain field modulation and global energy management, or we can gain a thousand energy and 400 minerals. I'm going to take the research. Research is probably more important. Well, currently right now, uh, 15 of our population belongs to your church, while 12 belongs to the Crimson, uh, Crimson Warrior Lodge. 50% of our population is spiritualist and 50% militaristic. Some of them cross over a little bit. Construction complete. Anomaly found. Uh, ch ch research the anomaly. Deep space tracking sensors confirm that someone else destroyed the subspace anomaly that was guarding our mis missing space probe in the Raimia system. The probe itself was also destroyed during the battle, so we no longer need to worry about the sensitive data it contained. Excellent. And we have successfully collected all of our missing sublight probes. The detailed information they held on our culture is now safe from prying alien photoreceptors. With the combined sensor telemetry, we have been able to fully survey a number of additional neighboring systems. Excellent. Uh, okay, so we got a bunch of knowledge here on the Runema system, which has a continental world with warm water lakes and a strange building. So we're definitely going to colonize that. Seems to be the only thing things they gave us information on um yeah they they get this stuff there's nothing i'm gonna do about that it's theirs we'll expand out this way next which we'll expand here uh when anomaly we can found. research that anomaly let's get you building a star base there after you're finished here so i can start getting some more colonization out we're gonna have to spend the additional influence to jump past uh the caravans at some point the spirits have granted us new wisdom research speed five percent is good basic combat rolls is probably what we should get but you know you know i think i'm gonna go for the additional energy from technicians the artificial structures are only found on one side of the asteroid. Our best guess is that they are a network of carefully concealed engines. Though capable of limited thrusts, they seem to be perfect for directing an object this large at a destination over an extended period of time. 
without the detectable emissions of a tradi traditional method of interstellar propulsion. Radar and gravimetric telemetry have also revealed that the core of the asteroid is much denser than it should be if it were a natural formation. Our working theory is that this was a weapon targeted at a planet, moon, or large station, and was disguised to look like a wayward asteroid at first. Only once it had impacted would its nature as a targeted connected kill vehicle be revealed. With its original core replaced by tungsten and other heavy elements, it would have enough mass to potentially render an entire world uninhabitable. Its existence and the fact its fuel pods are empty imply that it missed its target. Study of the engine of this planet killer weapon has yielded some intriguing details. We should keep a lookout for this kind of thing in the future. Uh, so that's nearly 1,200 minerals and 250 engineering research. Happily accept that. Um, I am going to take the leap and build a construction ship uh, early on to help us just fill in some of these uh, mining stations and research stations that I need. Seul 4 is uninhabited and an indeed uninhabitable, but not unvisited. Its surface is littered with tall centigraphs carved from some mineral not native to the planet, evidently placed here by some artistically inclined spacefaring race. The monolith's flowing lines definitely chart a histor history so fantastical it must surely be fiction. Surely. Uh, image them for the archives. If we do the other option there, it gives us pacifist uh, points and makes three of our population pacifist. Construction which, uh, complete. You know, is not what we're trying to do. Um, all right, let's begin with research stations, and then we'll get the mining stations and research stations, and then we'll start using you to also uh, claim territory as long as we have the influence. Anomaly found. Keep researching that. I am gonna have to bashing this up. There's, there's really no way around it. Ooh, we found a new archaeological site. Way out here. This is the Ghost Warship. A large ship is aimlessly drifting through the upper atmosphere of Seal B2. No life signs can be detected inside. Besides random asteroid impacts and old age, no external damage can be seen. Um, I kind of want you to come back over here and survey some of these systems for me. So I can see what we're working with and if it's worth trying to claim. Now, we could try and get ourselves way up here. This would be two choke points giving us access behind everything down this way-ish. I feel like I'm going to freaking end up killing these uh, caravaneers. Immense ragged planes of shadow drift across Obatullus 1's face. They are cast not by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere, hinged or rather jointed to allow for a small degree of articulation. Science officer Ventian is yet is as yet unwilling to say whether these things are flora or fauna, or what possible purpose, if any, their elaborate shadow casting might serve. Plus three modifier. Great freaking event to get. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. System survey. Coil complete. guns are good. The abyss mine is probably what we should get. That gives us 28 minerals for found. a three energy cost and continues that chain of events. Absolutely going to take that. Um, Caprica, Caprica, Caprica. Anything we need to do with you? Not really. We've the got jobs. We've got housing. Growth speed is wonderful. Habitability could be a good call. Uh, increases happiness. Gene clinics, though, I think is a better option if we want to start colonizing a lot of planets quickly. As far as our fleet upgrades go, 36 uh, alloys I can afford. I'm also going to take the risk of upgrading this to a bastion have been improved. from the get-go and invest the alloys into that. Uh, I just I don't want to lose these systems when these guys get aggressive. And they are at four planets colonized right now. That's going to be a nice relic world. Uh, we could also max out our fleet. That's probably a worthwhile investment. Get that last ship. Let's also get an admiral in case we need that. Um... Fire rate 
and sublight speed is a great admiral to have. We've encountered some form of alien vessel in the resource system. These strange objects have been flagged as Kappa aliens. Uh, interesting. They are amoebas, okay? Uh, what is their strength? They're only at 523. Technically, we could go kill them. I just don't know if it's worth it to do so. Uh, since you're going back here anyway, can we get you to do this research anomaly in the system so we can get the precursor event? And I think the other thing I want to do is probably get one more science ship out. It's a lot of scientists, but it might be useful. Construction complete. It's not a bad system. I am curious as to what these systems are like, but I'm sure we'll find out. So how good are your starting systems? Your homeworld gave you 22 minerals. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? And the nine energy system is nice, but none of these other systems are too great. Except you also have a two alloy system. Are you what? Technically three. Construction complete. 2.13 how do, how do I get something like that super early on I don't know um yeah you guys are busy building mining stations so we are going to colonize system survey complete here uh, let me pull up the BSG planet list I closed it we already have New Caprica. This is a continental world. We're going to call it uh, Geminon. Geminon, Geminon, Geminon. Um, you have no modifiers to speak of, really. You have a lot of agricultural districts. We're going to just like uh, leave you pretty generic. All right, New Caprica. Give me a city district to begin with. Followed by a generator district to give me jobs while you grow. That should be enough to start. Do you need to re-wait for 100 alloys to uh, get another science ship out? Since we just invested 200 into our new planet we're going to go colonize. Uh, is this going to be in its own sector? One, two, three, four. Yes, this will be its own sector. Uh, I don't know if there's planets here. Well, there isn't because we've been here before primordial world as well that'll be fine what was previously thought to be an assorted mountain in the southern hemisphere of Nolyan 2 has been identified as the massive skeletal remains of a single colossal alien life form the bones have been dated as 3.4 billion years old but our scientists have ruled out that Nolyan 2 could have supported life on that scale at any point in the planet's history science officer great Padinsky has prepared a special research project to delve further into this mystery fascinating Study it, it'll give you experience. All right, you are doing the anomaly, it looks like, is why it's taken so long to do stuff there. I freaking love the music from this game. It's so good. Oh, this star base is probably actually more deserving of our minerals than a science ship right now. Um, all right, so we have armor nullification and shield or ship hull points reduction, right? Uh, gun batteries are going to do shield damage, which is what we want. Um, so we're gonna get double gun batteries here and that's gonna be it for the moment. That'll give us the additional defense to hopefully protect ourselves a little bit. Construction complete. We balance everything out. Um, all right. A surface scan of Obet Obetalus 2 has identified the remnants of an ancient installation on the planet's surface. Most of the facility was wiped out by a massive explosion some 2 million years ago, but a few outlying buildings more or less survived the blast. All evidence recovered so far points to this having been some sort of research base for the first league. Uh, interesting. Please research that. Now, I do have influence. I don't have alloys. 
where are we going towards next? You know, what if I do this? What if I say passive move here? Let me see what's out here. Um, Special project complete. I'll tell you to research projects in the system. And that's it for the moment. Our continued studies of the massive skeletal remains on Nal Yon 2 have managed to shed some light on how the creature ended up on the planet. There are very faint residual energy readings that indicate some kind of dimensional portal existed briefly towards the rear of the skeleton. Science officer Gray Podinsky theorizes that the creature passed through this gateway from another dimension, only to quickly perish in the hostile environment of Nal Yon 2. Why it did this and where it came from are questions that may never be answered. Astounding indeed. Okay, so that's going to give us full discovery, which will give us technological ascendancy for a total of 20% increased uh, technology research speed, which is pretty freaking massive this early on. And good for us. Um, I do want you to survey that system as well, but then you're going to come out here and survey these systems so I can see if I want to try and claim them or not. Give me a science ship. Greetings from the Vangralium Trium, certified caravaneer traders of the Caravanasari Caravan Coalition. We bring you exclusive products from the furthest corners of the galaxy as reproduced by our shipboard factories at affordable prices. We will offer you an exclusive deal whatever we pass through your territory. Pardon. Attempting as it may be, you don't have to accept right away. You can ask us to contact you again before we depart your space, and we will. But be aware that incoming calls will be rerouted to Caravanasari Caravan Coalition. Greetings, Caravaneers. We teach Xenos how to earn a substantial additional income working from home. Um, show us your wares. We offer you Trium brand bunk beds. These innovative, space-efficient, stackable sleep receptacles increase the habitation potential of planetary housing, allowing you to squeeze in more cap capita per square meter, all for the low, low price of 1,200 alloys. One-time delivery of a to a single colony only. Bunk beds are guaranteed to last 80 years and no longer. Increases housing by 10% for the duration. Carefully consider distribution of bunk beds not included. Use of bunk beds is correct is correlated with a drastic increase in mild injury caused by falling out of bed, may cause privacy concerns, may increase social vulnerability to seasonal contagions and or pandemics. Um, not interested in move along. I don't have the alloys to spend on that right now. Our starbase in the Panuia system reports the Orland Memorial Caravan fleet has evacuated are evacuated and abandoned a decrepit ship, now in unstable orbit around the system's central star. One man's trash. Humans, we greet you. We are the operators of Rocket Industrial Enterprise, a member of the Caravanasari Caravan Coalition. We travel the stars. Our eyes catch all that glows. We gather and we trade. We pass through your space in peace, only to buy it to sell. Ksk. We will offer you good deals, many things. We will speak again before we leave. Should you call us, the Caravanasari Caravan Coalition will answer. Greetings, caravaneers. Oh, humans, the last haul. You would not believe it. Ksk. Crates and crates overflowing with munitions. Cubic tons of it. Come on, please look. What can you offer us? We have good workers for you. Good lifters, draggers, pullers, and cleaners. Healthy, clever. Give us 500 alloys and we shall send four racket pops to one of your planets. What? Criminal records? Afraid we've lost, lost those papers. Ksk. Not interested. Move along. Uh, we have a construction ship here that we can do the research projects after you're building the station, and we're receiving a transmission from the independent space station of the Artisan Troop. Intriguing. A visitor, this is a joyous occasion indeed. Oh, forgive my manners. I believe introductions are in order. We are the Artisan Troop. Our members have dedicated their lives to the pursuit of art, music, culture, and all other things which makes existence bearable to a sapient being. Please, if you would like to share in the wonder of our creations, do not hesitate to contact us. Interesting. Special project complete. The archaeological expedition we sent to Abeltalus II has returned. Very little remained of the First League research base they were sent to investigate. But judging by the isolated location, we suspect that the research conducted there was of a dangerous nature, possibly involving dimensional travel or advanced bioweapons. A recovered data disk from the Academy of Sciences has offered some insight into how the scientific community 
uh, of the first league was organized. An interesting find. Uh, the recreational complex of the ancients has been found over here. Interesting indeed. Mm -hmm. Not all that critical. Found. It's a fine anomaly to try. Um, oh, these are the caravaneers. They are both traveling through our space. Doing their own thing. Get reliquaries. We can get coins. We can play the slots. I'm not down to play any of that just complete. yet. All right, uh, we have a new science ship out, a sign leader. Ooh, survey speed. We're going to take that because that's what your goal is. Your goal is going to be to survey these outlying systems near us so we can find out what we have going on. Uh, the colony ship should be going to this station now. Construction complete. Um... Anything else we need to do for the moment? Not really. While approaching Borborgon 2B, the ISS Einstein suddenly received a glancing hit by several passing mass driver rounds. The projectiles were billions of years old, and based on their trajectory, they appear to be stray rounds fired from a neighboring galaxy. After missing their intended target, they continued on their journey for untold millennia until today. The rounds we have recovered are of an advanced design despite their incredible age. Incredible. Okay, so we cleared this out. So now we can see what's here. Um, you, I need you to survey system there. I am going to bring you back to go here. So once we can, we can claim this system. Construction complete. Um, you still need some additional stuff at the star base, like the a crew quarter and a target wisdom. uplink computer. Energy from technicians is good, so is automatic exploration. Almost at an energy deficit, but we'll stay solid for a while. Special project complete. An A-type star. The light blue star is relatively young to the other stars, yet among the most brightest. They are large and rotate very quickly, and will eventually slow down and turn into a red giant, given a few million years. Scientist has leveled up, and no special traits added. Caprica Shipyard. I mean, you're going to become a trade hub. Like, that's that's it. We're going to end up putting our, like, shipyard here at on dock. At least our first one. We'll get a second one somewhere out once we get further expanded. 